Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to our service of worship this morning at the First Congregational Church of Boylston, as well as those watching on television or the internet. Our service is also on WBAC at 2 o'clock. My name is Laurie Costello, and I am the worship leader today. Our organist is Charles Wachuku, and our minister is Pastor George Cole. The flowers on the altar are given in the loving memory of my mother, Grace Backholm, by Dottie Mungin and family. If you wish to communicate with the church or Pastor Cole, or leave a prayer request, please call the church office at 508-869-2027. Now, Pastor Cole has a few announcements he'd like to make. Just a reminder that today is an abbreviated service, so if you take a cat nap, you might miss the whole service. Uh, so be careful about that. But uh, we're going to have a special business meeting, and it's going to start three minutes after the benediction says amen. Okay? So uh, three minutes if you want to leave uh, or use the restroom or whatever, and the gavel's going to drop. Uh, but then uh, next, uh, uh, two Sundays from now, uh, June 27th, we're going to be uh, voting hopefully on a, a slate of officers for our pastoral search committee. Uh, those names are in your bulletins. I noticed a lot of those slips were falling out of people's bulletins. Uh, and so, um, you know, if yours fell down, I'm sure, you, you know, you're like me, you know, you get to a certain age and when some when you go down to pick something up, you just try to determine what else you can do while you're down there, you know? But, um, but um, yeah, so, uh, so be in thought and prayer uh, about those names. And then uh, read your bulletin for further announcements. Uh, next Sunday uh, at uh, 9.30 a.m., our service will begin. So Father's Day, we, we go to, to the 9.30 service. So you'll be walking in as we're walking out if you don't take note of that. And so uh, do take note of that. Um, and stay tuned uh, on the Friday email as to whether an, that's likely to be an indoor or outdoor service. Um, Norman French, whom I understand many of you know, passed away this morning at the age of 93. He was very active in the church and in town history. Um, and he was living in Florida at the time of his death, but just wanted you to be aware of that and wanted you to be aware too that Linda Olson will be going in for knee surgery uh, on Wednesday and, and uh, Lord, we just pray that you'll just watch over Linda and uh, be with her uh, and the doctors and may all work out well. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. All right. Please rise as you are able for the call to worship. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Now let's do the invocation together. Today, we enter your court with thanksgiving, O God, and come before your throne with praise on our hearts. You are good, and your love endures forever. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. And let's sing together this uh, song, He Has Made Me Glad. Number 214 in the hymnal, if you uh, wish to read the music as you sing. with praise. 
You may be seated and let us join our hearts together in the prayer of confession. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great love, according to the greatness of your compassions, blot out my transgressions. Lord, we thank you that your word is promised that a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. Thank you for receiving our requests for forgiveness and granting us so. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, you are seated. Never mind. <laughs> I'm not seated. You're seated. Okay. Um, so uh, for our scripture reading today, uh, Lori's going to read it for us, but I just want to give you the backdrop to it. The Apostle Paul started a church. He started many churches. He started one in a city called Ephesus. And uh, he stuck around that church after he started it for about two years and three months, according to the book of Acts. And he was trying to develop the people, but he ran into trouble with the city officials who persecuted him and demanded that he leave the city and that he never return. And so he had some unfinished business with the church and he decided to communicate that through the church leaders. So he asked the church leaders if they would meet him in a remote location. So they met in the city of Miletus, uh, 36 miles south of Ephesus where he started the church. And this is some of what he had to say. But when Paul landed in Miletus, he sent a message to the elders of the church at Ephesus, asking them to come and meet him there. When they arrived, he declared, you know that the day I set foot in the province of Asia Minor until now, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. I have endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. I have had one message for Jews and Greeks alike, the necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and of having faith in our Lord Jesus. And now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. And now I know that none of you to whom I have preached the kingdom will ever see me again. I declare today that I have been faithful. If anyone suffers eternal death, it's not my fault, for I didn't shrink from declaring all that God wants you to know. So guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, purchased with his own blood over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders. I know that false teachers, like vicious wolves, will come in among you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Even some men from your own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. Watch out. Remember the three years I was with you, my constant watch and care over you night and day, and many tears for you. And now I trust you to God and the message of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance with all those he has set apart for himself. Here I, ends the reading of his holy word. Thank you, Lori. So uh, in many churches, when changes are being introduced, uh, there's this common phrase that comes out in one way or another, and it's like, we've never done it that way before. <laughs> that has not been my experience here. 
my experience in this church founded in 1743 is, oh, we've done that before, many times. Uh, and so quite a, quite a different animal. Uh, but uh, I want to draw your attention to verse 28 uh, of the uh, scripture reading. Uh, and there it says, so guard yourselves and God's people. Feed and shepherd God's flock, his church purchased with his blood over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders. I'm going to keep referring back to uh, that verse, so you might want to keep it nearby. Uh, the, and the first word that I want us to focus on is the word church. Uh, in the New Testament, the word church is used a few different ways, but the two main ways are speaking of the universal church and the local church. The universal church is that invisible body of people that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him all around the world. They're of different genders, they're of different uh, nationalities, they're of different ethnic groups, they're of different skin colors, they're of different um, you know, denominations. I mean, we could go on and on. Uh, it, it's everybody who is a, a genuine believer of, in Christ, uh, that's the universal church, the invisible church. Then there's the visible church, the local church, such as First Congregational Church of uh, Boylston, uh, Massachusetts. And so when we look at Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, we ask ourselves, which church is he referring to? And he's telling the leaders of the church at Ephesus, feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leaders. So which one fits better into the context, the universal church or the local church? Well, it doesn't seem to me like he was appointing the board of elders of the church of Ephesus to be uh, in charge of uh, the entire universal and uh, invisible church of Christ. He was talking about a local church. And um, let's keep that in mind as we proceed. Now, according to Acts 20 and verse 28, uh, who owns that church? Who owned the church at Ephesus? Uh, who did it belong to? And uh, let's just look at the verse again. So guard yourselves and God's people, feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, which he purchased with his own blood. Well, don't you kind of get the impression that it's uh, um, God that owns the, the, the church, the, even the local church, the visible church? Um, and usually the one who owns something has the full rights to it. For example, there's a, a car sitting out in our parking lot, uh, a gold Honda, uh, a 2007, uh, you know, and uh, I own that. Now, if you wanted to use it, you know, it's up to me whether or not I let you use it. Uh, or if you want to paint it blue, you know, th that's not your prerogative. I'm the owner of that car. I have the right to have the decisions made pertaining to that car. Well, so it is with the local church. The one who owns it, namely God, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the one who owns it has the right to determine uh, what goes on with it. But sometimes we tend to think that our human leaders uh, own it. For example, I've told you before, there are three basic forms of church government. There's that which has uh, higher ups that are outside of the church, usually called bishops. There are those that uh, have within the church a board of elders who uh, make all the decisions and the people in those churches are obliged to follow them. And then there's the congregational style churches where the people uh, make the decisions pertaining to it. But what too often happens is that, you know, the bishop thinks I have the right to make the decision in this church. This church belongs to me and, and I will determine its direction. 
sometimes uh, the ruling board of elders say, you know, we're the ones in charge here. We'll make the decisions. We want the church to be what we want the church to be. And then sometimes congregations, right, uh, will say, you know, we the people own the church and we want the church to be what we want the church to be. But who owns the church? Do the uh, uh, leaders, do the, does the congregation, the one who owns the church is Jesus Christ, or God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and uh, we are called to subject our wills to his. And sometimes we get this sense of entitlement that, um, you know, well, I've been attending this church for 30 some years and I'm entitled to get my way. Or uh, I have given X number of hours to this church over the years and I'm entitled to get this way. Uh, I've been involved in this board and this board and this ministry and that committee and I, I, I've done all this for all these years and, uh, you know, I'm entitled to, uh, get some of my way around here. And nothing I'm saying is intended to diminish any offering of time or money or talent or anything that anyone has given. We are grateful we could not exist without the contributions of our people, not just money, time and everything else. We just couldn't exist. And so we are grateful and may you be encouraged by Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10, where it says that God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him. And so, uh, you know, we, we don't intend to diminish any of those sacrifices in any way. But none of the sacrifices that we make even comes close to the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made in order for us to be the people of God, in order to own this church, in order to uh, uh, give direction to this church. Uh, notice in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, it says, feed and shepherd God's uh, flock, his church, purchase with his own blood. Um, none of us have uh, sacrificed our lives and uh, here the Son of God comes to earth and is sacrificed his sinless precious blood in order to own the church, to buy the church. That was the price that he had to pay to have ownership over the people of God. If I could just quickly sketch the, uh, uh, one of the storylines in the Bible, it's that God created all things for his purposes, to love him, to fear him, to worship him, to serve him, to please him. It's all about God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. But the human race got away from that purpose for which they were created. And uh, the Bible says that all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And uh, we, we went rogue, we went independent. Uh, we thought that we could govern our own lives, we could govern our own churches, we could do what we wanted with our lives and with our churches between the time of our birth and the time uh, of our death. But the Bible says that God so loved the world that he sent his son in order to save the world, in order to rescue the world from this uh, purposeless uh, existence or existence other than the purpose for which they were created. And... Um, and, and there's a word uh, used uh, throughout the Bible, redemption, redeemed. God bought us back. So we got away from his control. We went rogue, but he has paid the price to buy us back so that we would belong to him again and so that we would live for those purposes for which we were originally created. And it is with this backdrop that we can understand 2 Corinthians 5.15 that says, Christ died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. And in that chapter we also read, so we make it our goal to please him 
For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. So as we enter into today's business meeting, for example, or any future business meeting, or any board meeting, or any team meeting, or any committee meeting, or any ministry meeting, it's all about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's us trying to stay attuned to what God wants to get out of our church more than what we want to get out of our church. And so, Father, help us to keep these things in mind as we um, conduct business not just today, but throughout the future. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So take your uh, song sheets there and uh, let's stand together and let's think about hymn number 401, The Church's One Foundation. How many of you would like an abbreviated service every week? <laughs> there are a few. <laughs> um, but uh, no. Uh, so Scott will come up and direct us in three minutes after I say amen to our benediction. And that goes like this. The grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. amen.